We are teaching Tilt Brush, and this episode is all about making faces. One of the more fun things to paint in Tilt Brush is people and stuff. Uh, people, cartoons, animals. We're going to focus this episode on human faces and a few tricks to make that easier, a few tricks in Tilt Brush. Uh, so you can do either more convincing faces or more expressive faces. There are really two ways we're going to cover here. One way we're going to use in our empty environment with black line, doing sketch faces, basically. Quick outlines. We're going to make it so it's not only two-dimensional, but three-dimensional. And when you look at it from different directions, it'll still read properly as a human face, a human head. We're also going to be working with a little more solid painting as well. We're actually going to be filling it in using various brushes and textures to again try to make a convincing face to be part of your painting, whether it's a portrait or an abstract with faces coming out of it. We're going to look at how we can use the tilt brush tools to get those faces to happen, even if you're not the world's greatest artist to start with. So what we're going to be using to start with, I've just got a white environment with a black wire so I can draw quickly and easily and it will show up whether I make it really big or if I make it really small, it'll still show up nice and clear in the sketch and on screen. Well, a little too small and now it disappears even for me. But you can see as I get closer to the camera, there it is. We're going to be working with these types of pieces. So I'm going to reset my sketch and we're going to start at the very beginning. Now with two-dimensional drawing, you're either drawing a profile from the side or you're drawing face on with your eyes and mouth. You can also draw perspective from different directions, but we're only ever going to experience that picture face on as a one picture. Here in Tilt Brush, we're more sculptural, so it's possible to turn our pictures and see it from different directions. So all of a sudden that portrait suddenly turns and can become a face on picture with its own eyes and mouth and eyebrows. And as you rotate that from different directions, we want it still to be able to read as a face in different directions. So let's start from scratch. Since most faces are fairly symmetrical, I'm actually going to activate our mirror tool. This tool lets me draw on one side and have it mirrored on the other side. So things like noses and mouths and stuff like that are going to be the same on both sides. Trying to draw them exactly the same freehand is possible, but takes a lot of practice, a lot of uh, trial and error, a lot of making very ugly faces until the good ones start to show up the way you want them to. With a mirror, whatever you do is exactly duplicated. Do bear in mind, it is exactly duplicated based along this line. So if I draw an eyeball, and if I want the eyeball looking to one side or the other, with a mirror tool, if I draw the iris getting close, it'll get close over here too. And instead of looking to the side, I'm looking cross-eyed. Or if I'm looking to this way, it makes it wall-eyed. Fortunately with Tilt Brush, if I use the tip mirror and just turn it on and off, but don't move it, it will always show up in the same place. So I can turn it off do details that are not supposed to be symmetrical and then turn it back on again and now I can go on and add details that are supposed to be symmetrical. With the mirror, as long as you just turn it on and off, it'll always be in the same place. If you do move it, it's going to be almost impossible to get it exactly lined up exactly the way it was the first time It'll always be just a little bit off, so things won't quite line up the way they used to anymore. So ideally, when you're doing faces, get the mirror in place where you want it, and then leave it alone. Don't touch it so that you can always come back to it when you need to, and you know it's going to be in the same place all the time. Unfortunately, the mirror is not something you can pin in place. So if you're not careful, it is something that you can accidentally move. So you can see I've got my pin. I can pin pieces, I can pin things, but I can't get this mirror to stay where it's going to be. So I'm going to go back to my normal brush, and we're going to 
gonna restart this whole thing so I can get the mirror set up and ready to go. Okay, blank slate. I'm gonna position the mirror so I can draw a face and still talk to you at the same time. Here we go. So as we draw the faces, for some people, drawing the outline profile first helps. Some people prefer to get the outside uh, edges first. It really doesn't matter which way it works for you. If you're doing the profile, you want it to follow the plane of the mirror. We could even turn the mirror off and draw the profile. A little big on the chin there, so I can do it as several strokes. Now I can get it more or less where I want it and put the mirror along that plane. Preferably keeping it more or less up and down. This is helping to give me a guideline on roughly where I want things to show up. I don't need to have it centered on the face. I can actually pull it off to the side just as long as I can see where that plane is. So as I start painting, we're going to be able to keep it symmetrical on both sides. Feel free to change your scale a lot as well. As I'm working on details, I might want to make the picture big, and now I can work on the details. I can even make my brush really small and work on fine details, and then sweep it out. Now I can do large things like hair much more quickly and easily. So I'm going to be changing size and scale as I work with this picture a lot. So I'm starting with a nice profile here, and I've got it lined up more or less on my mirror plane. I'm just going to very roughly put in about how big the head is going to be. So it doesn't even have to be exact. If you don't get it right the first time, there's no harm in undoing and trying something else and getting it more or less the size you want. I'm also going to find where the eyes are and do a horizontal line roughly where the eyes are. It's about halfway along this total size of the head. And as you can see, it's just about where the bridge of the nose is on the profile. Let's scale that up a little bit. I'm not trying to make everything touch or draw every details. I'm just trying to get the general size and location. So as I fill in details, I know roughly where they should be, what proportion they would be in. So if I'm going to do a mouth, I can quickly go over where the mouth is and just make it mouth sized. If I'm going by rough natural proportions. The mouth is roughly from the center of the eyeball to the center of the eyeball. So if my eyes are here, the mouth's going to be about that wide. I don't have to make it perfectly aligned with anything. I'm just trying to get general proportions. For the eyes themselves, I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to bring up the guys. Eyeballs are spheres. So I'm going to use my sphere to get a rough idea of how big and location of where the eyeballs are. So from the side, the eyeballs are going to be about here. We're going to leave room for some cheekbone, that type of thing, some cheekbone in here, that type of stuff. So the eyeball is going to be roughly not quite halfway into the head. Just leave a little space between the bridge of the nose and the eyeball. With it centered, one eyeball is roughly the distance between the two eyeballs. So if I had three guides roughly the same size, one centered and then one on either side, touching edge to edge, I'm going to put a little mark right here. So now I'm going to put this guide here. And again, I'm a little bit low, I'm going to raise it up. Move it in and out find roughly where it's going to be, and I'm actually going to paint on sort of an eyelid shape. Because I've got the mirror going, you can see it's roughly same on both sides. Done with this for now. So with these pieces, it's starting to look mask-like, starting to get some faces. It's not perfect. I'd like to be able to draw with this but as I go, I'm going to need to erase bits and pieces, but I'd like to keep guidelines. So one thing I'm going to do to help keep track of what I want to keep, I'm actually going to switch to the recolor 
tool, the recolor tool. And I'm going to switch to a nice medium blue, and I'm going to recolor some of these lines. So that I know these are just guidelines. They're not part of my finished project. Now I can go back to a black wire and I can start sketching in. Okay, we're gonna have an eye. Whoops. Let's put down our recolor tool. Back to the wire, that helps. And we're gonna do some rough sketches of where we want things to be. We've got a nose coming in here, so we've got a nostrils. Get the point of the nose. Well, undo, a little point of a nose here. We've got our little lines between our lips. So as we're going, I'm using the blue to keep track of roughly where things are supposed to be, which helps to start set up where I want the rest of this picture to go. Okay, now we'll get on some chin going down here. Jawline actually comes out a little bit. So as we're looking from the front, keep track of where these edges are. So as I start bringing in temples and cheekbones, we can start to keep track of where on the face we are, how deep we're trying to be, and building up the pieces from here. At this point, I'm not doing great long lines. Because as you rotate around, those great long lines start to look kind of odd when you find the angle they're not supposed to be viewed at. So now that I'm getting more of these guidelines in place, I'm just going to be sketching in some rough details. I can now choose my eraser tool and start getting rid of some of these guidelines I might not need anymore. If you're getting pieces close together, feel free to scale up. That makes it much easier to just grab the pieces you're trying to grab and not getting pieces that just happen to be close together to each other. Back to the starting zone, and here we can see the face is really starting to come together. Since I'm just doing black lines on a white background, it again can be difficult for it to see properly at different angles. We get things like my jawline here. Well, that's kind of skinny, so let's go back to my uh, painting tools and bring that jawline out to about here, where it's supposed to be. A little too narrow, so now we'll bring it out to here. Now I'm going to grab my eraser, or in this case, I'm just going to recolor. I don't know which ones I want to keep, so I'm just going to recolor these guys until I see, okay, that's actually some pretty good location for it. Now I can erase the ones I don't like. Or I could go in and erase, whoops, looks like I erased one too many. That's why making it big gives you a little more control of those pieces. I don't want to lose my big guide wire here just yet. But that's starting to bring these things together. Here's a case where from the profile, here's my forehead line. But from face on, that forehead line's like he's got a big mohawk starting. Or maybe he's wearing a VR strap on his head. So I'm going to recolor that one back to my blue. And then go back to my black wire. And rather than just drawing it as a straight line like that, I can start bringing in details, forehead lines. Okay, now we're starting to look a little Klingon. But now you can start to see how I can use space and lines to build up the shape. Doing it with straight outlines, getting some of these smooth curves is very difficult to get to read properly at different directions. So things like forehead lines, creases, or if I was to give them a hairline, now that starts to give definition to the shape of his head. So now we'll start coming in the back of his skull. And again, from all directions, just sort of filling in the details. With hair, you can cheat because you can actually do lots of lines sort of converging and overlapping, and it will still read as hair. The trouble is, with this type of environment, since it's transparent, the moment I look at the head face on, the hair starts to interfere with the actual face itself. Now maybe if I try some creative erasing, just certain pieces, 
We'll help it still read okay. A little bit more up here we don't need. A little bit of a trim for my fellow here. But you can see how we're just building up the shape. We don't need to connect all of the lines. Our own viewer's imagination will help fill in the pieces. So I'm going to just go ahead and delete some of these blue pieces that are left. And I'm going to hide my mirror. So now we've got this face that still reads visibly as a face from different directions, from different angles. From behind, it's kind of, oh, we can still see the face through it. So drawing faces, it's a matter of starting with some initial pieces and building up from there. Since I haven't actually moved the mirror, I can reactivate the mirror, and it's still right where it needs to be. I can now go back in with my wire and start doing pieces like a little bit more in the nose, a little bit more in the shape of the eyes, that type of thing. A little cheekbone. When you draw any individual line, try to think of it in three dimensions. What's it going to look like from the side? What's it going to look like from the front? How does it build up the shape in both directions? So if I'm going to draw the line connecting the nostril to the side of the mouth, from the front, it's going to come down at an angle like that. From the side, it's going to come in at an angle like that. Oops, that's not standing in front of what I'm trying to show you. So if we can find a way to redraw that line that works clearly in both directions, then it can help some give some depth to the face, some shape to the face, and see how this thing works as an object. I'm going to turn off the mirror. If I'm going to do eyes, if the eyes are looking straight ahead, the mirror is nice because then I can keep them both focused in exactly the same direction. But if I'm off by a little bit, if I'm a little too close to the inside, or a little too close to the outside, it does look a little funny. So eyes tend to be something I'm going to turn off the mirror. So I can have him looking at a slight direction, and I can try to match that slight direction in the other eye, so it gives it focus without being perfectly symmetrical. Now is a good time, for example, anything like beauty marks, scars, moles. If I want them to be smirking slightly, one side of the mouth gets a little more detail than the other side of the mouth, and it helps read. Likewise, maybe I want one eyebrow doing the classic smirk. So one going up a little bit, the other one going down a little bit type of thing. Those are stuff I would not want to be perfectly symmetrical. I'm not moving the mirror, so now I can turn it back on and go back and add details to help keep it uh, of the same face from all directions. Maybe the eyebrow is going to get a little more depth to it. So it helps read in a little more directions. So this is all using line art to bring a face into 3D. Little more thought required than a standard 2D, just because we need to think of how we're going to approach it from different sizes and different directions. The mirror tool being one of our most useful tools for helping with symmetry. Thinking about the size of the neck and the shape of the neck what pieces are going to be, where they show up, that type of thing. It is always a good idea to bring in reference images. We've seen in other lessons how you can actually import pictures if you're using a PC, or import poly models, even if you're using a Quest, to use as a reference. I could even bring in a mannequin head and paint over the mannequin head and then get rid of the head when I'm done, just to leave the face where it is in space. Just bearing in mind with these outline views, you can see through them, so as you get to different angles, it can be hard to see how they look. I'm actually going to turn off my mirror. For people using any of our uh, tilt brush versions, I can use the selection tool. I'm going to go up to very large, so I can quickly and easily select the entire head. PC users, I could also do selection tool, select all. Now I can actually grab this, move it around. I can change its scale. 
I can look at it from different directions, top and bottom, left and right, that I normally can't, just changing size and tilt brush. But now that I have it as a thing, I can work with it and really decide what needs to be changed, that type of stuff. Undo, undo, puts it back into place after I've waved it around. As long as I haven't moved it around a lot, I could undo more than once, and now it's even back aligned with the mirror. Now I can go in with a painting, even though I moved it around, magic of undo gets me back to where I was, where I want to start working. So this is doing a line art face using our tilt brush tools to really make it a little faster and easier to make a face that reads as a face from any angle. Since it does get transparent, we're now going to add the next piece of filling it in using actual brush tools to make a solid face, or make a solid head. So now I can view it from any angle, change the light source, and it will read as a solid head. So for this, I'm going to temporarily hide my mirror, wherever my mirror went, and I'm also going to change to a different environment. This flat white environment is great for our sharp line drawing, but now I'm going to switch environments to one that's got a little more uh, environment to it, just so we can get some more play with light and shadow, that type of thing. I'm going to choose the uh, dress form so that I can try to get, now I'm going to select all, and we'll put this head right in place, we'll make it right size and shape. There we go. It's a little weird, but I think that's going to work. Okay. So what I'd like to do, you can see how the mannequin form has a lot of light and shadow. So I want to paint in this head so it's using a similar light and shadow, and I can move it from any distance around, and it feels like a solid object. So our first lesson was sketching faces. Now we're going to see if we can paint in the faces to make them a bit more sculptural. And I'm just going to adjust it a little bit. Okay, here we go. We've got our face here. Hopefully people aren't a little too disturbed by it. And we're going to be painting this guy in uh, just to see if we can get him uh, a little more realistic working with our light and shadow. Now, there's a lot of different brushes we could work with. For example, some of these 3D brushes, like the hull brush, if I switch to a nice pale gray, you can see how I can build up a lot of shape, a lot of texture. So if I'm good with foreheads, bridges of noses, cheekbones, that type of thing, I can really start to build up a convincing sculpture of a head. Very Picasso in this case. But in this case, I'm going to try to see if I can make it follow this pattern here. With the mass tool, if I have a sketch to start with, that sort of gives me a guide for all the different pieces that I want to work with here. I can roughly see in space how big cheeks are, how big jaw lines need to be, where I want cheekbones, that type of stuff. So I can actually build this up as a convincing 3D piece. Already, we can start to see how the light and sculpture really turns this into an object. With the 3D tools, I can build up these shapes, work with these shapes, to try to make a convincing solid object. Working with different colors, even once they're in place, I can use my recolor tools to start giving it more interesting flesh tones, that type of stuff. So one way of going about this is using our actual 3D tools to make these 3D shapes. Let me very carefully here, only erase the pieces I want to erase. So one way is building up actual 3D shapes in space using our 3D shape tools. Another common way to do faces or any type of natural organic shape is to use some of our more painterly brushes. Coarse bristles is actually very popular. I'm actually going to get a nice pale fleshy tone here. And if I go in with coarse bristles, 
you can see how I can start to build up shape. None of these pieces themselves define what's happening here. But the more I build up with this particular paintbrush, you can see I'm building up the size and the shape and even the direction of the paintbrush helps give it direct, uh, uh, helps give it motion, helps give it texture. Since these are all individual brushes, if anything seems out of place, I can very carefully go in with the eraser to trim down, soften down any of these pieces that are not correct. Remember, it's going to get rid of the whole stroke. I can't just trim the end off of a piece. I have to remove that whole piece and then redo that piece a little more conscientiously. Or even build it up out of many, many smaller brush strokes. Don't forget to change the size of the piece and the size of your brush. So if I want to go in and start doing details around the nose and things like that, I can get as close to the object as I want, start building up as many of these pieces as I want, until it starts getting the effect that I'm looking for. And as I move it around, Oops. We can start to see, oh, the nose a little chopped off here, so let's start building up our nose. A little bit bigger on the, well, not too big on the brush, because he's still, you don't want the nose to go too far. Now we can see things going, okay, now we'll build up that forehead. It's going a little too far in, so let's start, get some guidelines, so we can start building the up larger strokes using those guidelines. That's how far out I want it to come. So that's how far out these strokes need to go. Now it starts to build out that face, build out those details. With only a few passes, it's very patchy. It's very jagged. But as I go in with more detail, I can really smooth out the curves, smooth out those lines. So as the viewer looks at it, there's less being left to their imagination and it's more about building up your shapes, that type of thing. Using the actual light and shadow, if I now start changing my light source, you can see how it changes the light on the face. We have things like shadows from cheekbones, that type of stuff showing up in the picture itself. Right here, okay, thank you light source. As you go, it's okay to vary color as well. You can actually emphasize those highlights and shadows. I can grab a paler skin tone to do on the parts of the face that are supposed to be a little more highlighted. Get build up the chin a little here, maybe a little on the jawline, definitely build up the color in the cheekbone, that type of thing. Just going in with the paler makes those areas pop a little bit more. Now I need to get a little more pink, Get the lips in here. I don't want to go too vibrant. I'm not trying to make lipstick. But even men uh, of every uh, uh, type will have slight variation in skin tones. Using a slightly darker tone to imply shadow, and then the paler, whiter tones to imply highlights help again bring out the shape, bring out the definition. The more time you put into it, the better it's going to be. So obviously my little 10 minute demonstration here, I keep falling off the side, sorry, gives us only a limited amount of, of, of perspective, but this shows how you can really build it up over the process of time. I'm using my sketch for the actual general locations. Now let's go give it a nice dark brown for our eyebrows. And again, use those to not only give it profile definition, but also from the side, we can use it to define the shape of the head this way, using that same stroke, depending on how it turns and rotates in space. Here's another case where I may have benefited from having the mirror tool, so that it would be defilling in both sides at once. So just, just to show what I'm talking about, let me get my mirror back. There's my mirror. Now this is not going to be perfect, because it wasn't drawn on this, but I can get pretty close, especially because with my sketch there were a few center points to go by. So that's not perfect, but it's pretty close. So now we're going to go back to 
our flesh tone brush here, and as I start to build it up over here, it's going to start building it up on that side as well. Let's grab the darker skin tone. And as I fill it in on both sides, it starts to fill in over here as well. Okay, a little closer to the eyes. In here. Now we'll go down the side. We've got some temples over here. And the more we fill in, the more it starts to read as a face. And because we're painting it in, it's not transparent. We're not seeing the opposite side of the face through the head. Let's go in. Now with eyes, not only am I going to go, you could go for a vibrant, pure white. But depending on your shadows and things, it may or may not read as white. And again, you can play with that, paint in different colors. Some people will even switch to a different type of brush. So for example, the flat marker brush is not affected. So I could just paint the whole eye flat like that. And now I'm going to go in with nice brown eyes. That type of thing. Again, since I did the eyes with the mirror tool, it could be a little janky depending on what you're trying to uh, achieve. But this is working with faces in Tilt Brush. We've got a bunch of different tools to help it work. Now, with the PC, another way to achieve its symmetry, this does not work with the Quest yet, as of August, but I can use my selection tool to get half the head. I'm even going to grab that. Here is half the hand. I can duplicate that. Two halves head. Unfortunately, there's no real way to mirror image that piece. Or is there? Under the selection tool, but only for the PC users, it's not available yet for the Quest. Under selection, while you have something selected, Flip selection turns it into a mirror image. So now I can put these halves together. Looks really weird in this case because I forgot to grab the nose, but you can actually duplicate and mirror flip any of your creations. Use the selection tool to grab the piece, make a duplicate copy. While the duplicate is selected, flip, whoops, flip selection turns it into a mirror image. Now I can do just a little bit of repositioning and then go in and fill in the pieces. So we have a bunch of different tools built in to try to make faces more easily done using Tilt Brush. There are a bunch of other artists using these types of tools for doing faces. So if browse around Tilt Brush on YouTube. We'll have a couple of links to a couple popular ones in the comments below as well. But this is all about using either brush tools, mirror tools, and line tools to try to build up faces in Tilt Brush. If they're perfectly symmetrical, you can have some generic emotion. A smile curves up on both sides, a frown on both sides. We'll turn off the mirror tool for a little more expression. So now I'm going to go in with our flat black wire here. And instead of just a regular smile, we make it sort of a slightly lopsided smirk, that type of thing. We don't want those symmetrical, just so we can get a little more personality into it. So feel free to work with images as a base. Work with line to set up where things will be and then different brush tools to bring out the color and filling. With these pieces, we can start making interesting faces. We can start having a lot of fun with them. So hopefully you guys will use these tools to really start making crowds and groups. Maybe I'll select the whole piece, duplicate it. Let's see. So I'm going to select the whole piece. Eyes and everything. Duplicate it. And now I'm going to use the recolor tool 
to change aspects about the face. Now we get a little bit of a darker recolor tool. We get into some of the shadow areas. That type of thing. Now we're cooking with gas. Now we're using these pieces and the tilt brush tools to really start getting a lot of personality, a lot of crowd shots going, different people. Now I'll give this guy one set of hairs, big crazy dreadlocks. I'll give this guy long blonde hair just because they're going out onto the beach together. Or whatever it is we're doing here, we've got all kinds of fun stuff to build up with tilt brush. Use these tools practice even if you don't save your work or show anybody have fun get some expression out there and really see what these tools can do in order to get fun stuff happening so we're going to be back here every week doing this stuff let me put down these tools and get back to where i'm supposed to be so let us know in the comments if there's any lessons you want to learn about we're having a lot of fun doing these. We got a lot more lessons planned, but in the future, we'd like to give you art lessons about things you want to know more about, whether it's landscaping, working more with light. We're just here to show you how to fun with Tilt Brush. So have fun, get out there, and we'll see you in another lesson.